afternoon. Hey, I'm Drew. Vaughn and I will be talking to you this afternoon about uh, marketing analytics in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, I'll introduce him in a minute, but uh, just to let you know that unfortunately uh, Vaughn had something happen in the family this weekend and he couldn't be here live. So I apologize about that, but the good news is that Telium, uh, particularly Meredith, pulled this whole thing off to get him videotaped, so he'll be here virtually, okay? So before I introduce him, let me just give you a little bit of a background, okay? Um, pharmaceutical companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year in commercial activities, hundreds. And uh, they're targeting two main people in, in the marketplace, right? The HCPs, healthcare providers, physicians, you know, payers, nurses, pharmacists, and so forth. And the other one are, are patients, right? And it's so important for them to get through all this um, noise in the marketplace because what they're trying to do is target the right person, right, with the right message, right, in the right portion of their journey because they want to convince them that the drug they have specifically for them is really going to help improve their quality of life as well as can save lives. So when you think about what's at stake, uh, there's a couple of drugs that in the cholesterol market, right? Lipitor or Crestor, have you heard of those? Right? Do you know what those sales were per year at peak? Anybody? Between nine and $13 billion a year. Okay, yeah, huge. Now, behind all of this, when you see these ads or something, is a massive commercial operation situation, massive. And you know why? Because the FDA, FDA mandates that all this stuff has to go through an internal review and approval process called medical, legal, and regulatory, right? And it's even down to the font size, placement, scroll speed, all these kind of things you can and can't say. You can't even have a picture of someone smiling if it's a drug for some neurological disease, right? So think about this. Some of these pharma companies have five, 10, and 20 drugs. And it takes anywhere from three weeks to about six months to get one program through this review process. And these companies have between 10 and 15,000 individual programs every year. So before anything gets out the door, any rep says a word, you see a printed thing, you hear anything on TV, right? right? That's what has to happen. So just imagine the massive work that's happening behind the scenes, okay? So with that backdrop, let me just introduce you to Vaughn, who couldn't be here today. Hello, everybody. I'm Vaughn Williams, and I'm really sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I'm excited to be able to participate in DV and share the story of the Sanofi partnership with Cognizant and Telium. I currently serve as the global lead for digital marketing analytics and optimization at Sanofi. Just a little bit about myself, I spent most of the last 15 years in marketing roles in CPG, medical device, and pharma at companies like Sanofi and Johnson & Johnson. My current role is actually in IT for the first time, where I'm a sort of marketing whisperer charged with translating marketing needs into IT speak and deciphering IT technical speak into features and services that marketers can understand and use. When I started in this role, I assumed ownership of our corporate Google Analytics account because nobody else was owning it. And I've been leading efforts to drive adoption, implementation, and competency with the platform. Prior to all this, I spent seven years in the Navy where I got to meet some pretty interesting people. And now in my spare time, my wife and I are on a quest to run a race in all 50 states. This weekend, we'll be in Fargo, North Dakota, knocking out state number 49. Alaska's right around the corner is number 50. So to set the scene for how Drew and Telium helped us so much, I have to give you some background on Sanofi. Sanofi is a global pharmaceutical company based in France that's in the business of making medicines. We get up every morning and our purpose for going to work is to help empower life. And we are a huge company. We have over 100,000 employees in 100 countries doing about $35 billion in sales last year. Uh, from an operational standpoint, English is the official language, but as you can guess, there are a lot of French speakers, as well as lots of other languages. And we have employees living in every time zone across the globe. And if that wasn't enough complexity, we're organized into five very distinct business units, each with their own personality, culture, and business objectives. Our vaccines business is the historical heart of the company. And if you had a flu shot this year, it's pretty likely that it came from us. We have a consumer healthcare business, which competes in CPG with brands like Allegra or Gold Bond and Icy Hot. Our primary care business is built around our core diabetes and cardiovascular groups, which have been until recently the center of the company's growth. 
with products like Lantus for diabetes. A few years ago, we bought a company called Genzyme, headquartered in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And their innovative work in oncology, rare disease, and with monoclonal antibodies has turned them into the growth engine of the company. And finally, because that's not enough complexity, for, for China, our most rapidly growing market, and other emerging markets, we created a separate business unit that contains all of the other business units, but just for those geographies. So now that you hopefully have a sense for how large, diverse, and complex we are, let me give you some additional complicating factors. First, we have a lot of web properties, and I mean a lot. As of just a few days ago, Sanofi, with its 100,000 employees in 100 countries, has 7,000 active websites. 7,000, not misspeaking. That's basically one website for every 15 employees. And how we got there and what we're doing to fix that is another topic for another day. But the scale of the challenge is very real. And second, as you can probably guess, given the span and the volume of sites, we didn't really have global tagging standards. Third, pharma is really regulated. Each of these countries essentially has its own regulatory bodies who have different levels of oversight over marketing activities, which in turn means that each Sanofi team has a different level of engagement with working with those regulatory bodies. And websites are a complex piece of the relationship between the two groups and require special attention and special skills to manage. And finally, there are the Sanofi users themselves. Each has a different level of expertise or engagement or energy for working on website projects and digital marketing in general. So hopefully I've painted a picture of a situation that's pretty challenging or even daunting, right? So what do you do with a problem that big? Or with a problem where you don't even know what you don't know, where do you start? Well, first, in our case, you go get help. And this is where Drew comes in. OK. Well, thanks, Devon, right? So um, this is what their approach was. And we're going to talk about uh, what we talk about in terms of crawl, walk, and then run, where they initially chose us as a partner to bring them in and to ease the system, the process and system in with the organization before they actually bought everything. They, they got everything that serviced through us. So let me just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I lead our commercial operations services and our life science practice. Most of my career has been in uh, life sciences from big companies, J&J, &J, BMS, and so forth. Um, and I've launched a whole host of brands, marketing excellence, product development, all, all kinds of things like that, right? Um, a couple tidbits about me as well is that I actually started my career in theater and acting. I, I'm a graduate from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Anybody else here, right? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> Has anybody seen me in the movies or any films? Have you seen me in TV? Exactly, right? It, I failed miserably, <laughs> miserably. So a little secret I can let you in, but don't tell anybody, is that every frustrated actor winds up going into biomedical engineering. It's the truth. It's the truth. And if you're really frustrated, then you go on for a couple grad degrees in science. And then if you're really frustrated, like I was, you go into breast cancer research. So um, another couple things is uh, after kids, I started a nonprofit organization. It was an information resource in childhood diseases. And then in my spare time, I'm an avid mountain biker. If anybody out here, you might see me on the trails here. This one is in um, Pikes Forest in Colorado. And I'm out in New Jersey. We've got some fun stuff there, too. OK. So oh, Cognizant. Cognizant is a, uh, I work for Cognizant. And they're about a 20-year-old company. I like to say they are the smallest company with 260,000 people that I've ever worked for. And they're about 20, I mean, 16 billion in revenue. And they provide services to every industry. And if you're here at a larger company, we probably have some footprint within your organization. Um, so this was, our, this was our mission statement, right? And I think it's really important for you to think about when you're implementing an enterprise-wide system like Telium, what is really your mission statement? And this was ours, right? How an organization's approach to technology adoption can drive digital analytic strategies and enable global operational efficiencies, data governance, customer-centric personalization, and better ROI on marketing investments. And I think it's really important for you to get that down to make sure that your leadership understands what you're trying to accomplish. Right. Now, I want to start also by reviewing with you a couple of things that are really important. Something that I call organizational readiness, and it's based upon a lot of work, but one in particular is a professor at Townsend University in Maryland, right? He wrote this meta-analysis. People know what that is, and, and science is pretty big, but you, you look at all these different studies and you put it all together. 
And what he found was that in enterprise architect and information technology, right, you have three components to every type of integration, enterprise-wide. You've got technology, you've got sort of the process and gating changing, and then you have behavior. And what he found was that 66 to like 84% of the time, these integrations, these implementations failed. Failed. And about 14, about 86% of the time, they failed in the public sector, right? And the failure has happened because people are going to have a new platform like Telium. It's a great platform, but you implement that platform only, and you, hopefully you'll get 20 or 30% lift and efficiencies. But if you don't do anything else, it goes back to this, where it was. How many times have people said, I wish I had the old system, right? So organizational readiness is a, is a combination of change management and then behavioral dynamics. So if you just focus then on, okay, I've got the platform and the process and so forth, this is the what I'm gonna do differently, it's gonna have a boost and it'll go back to the same. So what he found is key is that the people, the people, the behavioral dynamics is key to a success. So when you're talking to your internal stakeholders, don't always just talk about the platform, talk about the value it brings to them. Right? And that's one of the keys to success. Uh, so the approach was a crawl, walk, and run. Uh, first steps, build your business case, right? Collaborate with a partner that can help you provide some strategic value and business cases. You have to educate your stakeholders about really what a tag management system is. Uh, educate them as to a tagging primer. Uh, summarize how the solution will overcome some challenges. Uh, highlight the added capabilities to support privacy regulations. In our business, it's very highly regulated, right? And then consider options. You know, you can either direct license with a platform company or you can do it through your partner, right? Depending upon what you want to do. Oh, and then also what's important, the opportunities to scale, right? Additional products and service because you want to be able to have something that for the long run can help the organization grow. So when we start out with crawl, we're starting out with a concise value proposition. Okay? And this is, we're selling this internally because this is a big investment and people have to be engaged and, and brought on and, and bought in. So a wide variety of analytic platforms were in use in various states and of upkeeps, impacts reporting quality, reduced tool utility, and diminished confidence and accuracy. Big thing, right? If your business people don't have confidence in the, in the data and the accuracy, they're not gonna use it. So we chose with Sanofi a solution of a combination of Telium, GA360, and then initially a turnkey service where we take the license and wrap around all the service and, and implement it. We could avoid getting involved with IT, all the documentation, because we had all the MSAs and the documentation, we brought it in nice and seamlessly. The benefits have to do with operational, right? Business, market engagement, and then strategic fit and scalability, right? Really important. The next thing is educate, right? Educate the stakeholders, and we even created a tag primer. And why? Whether you have a 100-person company, or in this case, a 100,000-person company, don't assume they know what this stuff is, okay? Don't. Uh, and we actually created a primer for them to help them through this process. Also, solving for these costly practices that they're the bad practices they have now in terms of the challenges, right? Because these large organizations literally, literally have hundreds, hundreds of agencies doing this work. And can you imagine the costs associated with doing their own coding, they're doing it on platforms, they're doing it someplace else? And this is their property, and they have no control over it, right? So help them understand that. Also, as a partner, it's our job to help them and rationalize this stuff, right? Vaughn talked about literally seven, over 7,000 websites. I mean, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? So what we help them do is assess, rationalize, assess, and then start to put them in containers, right? Why, why would one brand need all these different types of things if it's a small little simple brand, right? So you have small brands, you have big brands, you have global brands. So we started thinking about how do we do this, right? Maybe some need se several variables, right, in events. Maybe some need more variables, and then maybe some of the global brands need much more robust, right, data layers and so forth, okay? So we help them compartmentalize them. 
the next thing is, oh, so that was part of the crawl, right? Get your value prop, all your people educated, and have a plan. And for the uh, walk part is, what's the methodology for tag assessment? So they got 7,000 sites, we got them in these type of silos, prioritization, how do we help them in assessing what they need, collaborating with their brands, prioritizing, defining tag strategy, and then getting it into the configuration. And we also had to help them with tag specs, documentation, and all those things, right? So, and then this whole tag strategy, traffics and engagement, homepage downloads, what do they really want to do and why? And don't forget we're in a very highly regulated industry, right? And then also to the documentation. And you can imagine 7,000 sites and hundreds of agencies, the documentation and data is not there. And in big pharma, you need to have that. You ha and I know every place else, but within big pharma, there's something else called a CIA, Corporate Integrity Agreement. That means you really got to have your act together because the government is looking at stuff. Okay? So during this walk phase, right, we do all these stuff, and I can tell you to date, we've assessed almost 1,000 sites. I mean, this is pretty amazing. For all the different languages, they're global sites. They're anonymized, okay? So it's pretty amazing. So when you get to that point, make sure you're communicating to your stakeholders a look at the stuff that you've accomplished, okay? And in addition to that, we've got over 200 sites active on IQ. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful. We have people, brand teams calling us up all the time. Hey, how can we get this on there? Because now they have consistency, right? Documentation, and they have confidence in the data. Otherwise, they've been spending, like I said before, hundreds of millions of dollars and not knowing really why. So now that we're at this walk phase, we want to get to the run phase. And sort of what does that mean, okay? So one of the first things we did was the cookie consent, right? And another component of IQ is that you can have sort of preference, you know, preference centers for opting in and opt out, almost like you do in the email campaign activities or, or, or marketing automation platforms where you can establish your preferences. So it's a wonderful tool where you could say, hey, I want to opt in and opt out based upon different types of tags. And you can customize these things, which is really cool, based upon the, and it'll identify what part of the world it's being asked of, right? And then you could have a proof copy that's pushed up and says, hey, here's your pop-up window for your opt-in or opt-out. Really cool stuff. And then we helped them again. So this is the technology. We then helped them with the process. And then we also helped them with behavioral changes, right? Creating fact sheets, educating them in terms of what it can do, what it can't do, where things are stored, and the value it adds to them. Because a global company like Sanofi has to adhere to GDPR, as well as what's happening in the States and so forth, like in California. So this is a wonderful thing for the, for the run. Um, also, uh, Sanofi, like many of the big pharma, you know, uh, they're very conservative because of all the concerns and regulations and so forth. There's a lot of other stuff in terms of if they get back some information, they have to collect that information because it could be some type of adverse event, right? So, and then they have to report within 24 hours. That's a whole other story. But what their big initiative was, how do we achieve next best action? And they weren't able to do that because, they have, because they're so diverse and disparate and all that stuff. So EventStream was the next perfect solution for that, right? So we helped them structure that, the layer layers and connect connectivity and so forth. And that, well, we actually had a demo at their senior leadership in Paris where we showed them how it was working in Telegram when someone clicked on a registration or activity and how they could use that really for a next, for a next best action, whether it's a physician in Germany or it's a consumer in the United States. Right? So it was a first for them. Now, in addition to that, in terms of run, the, the, the additional product is audience stream, right? So audience stream is going to help you stitch all that information together, right? So in the pharmaceutical world, boy, data comes from these big data providers about prescriptions and so forth. It's all over the place, right? Physicians. So with this, you can ha actually stitch together improved profiles, right, of your target audience, as I mentioned before. And this was... Uh, this was really well received, and this goes into their bigger, bigger stack for the global dashboarding reporting, 
uh, on their global brands by countries. But the way that we sold this into their organization was looking for value, right? Where could they get value? And it's not about the platform, it's about what the business benefit. Just one simple benefit was something we called a registration booster. So in some of their sites, they may have five or 10,000 visitors a, a month, right? Um, and so they, let's say it keeps on continuing, but if they have a unique visitor and they can identify some of those visitors, so when they come back the next time, they could target specific messages to them during that time to encourage them to have a call to action and to register. So if we estimate that, you know, maybe there's a 10% improvement a month, you know, that's 500 potential new registrants for them. In pharma, that's big, right? And just think about what they can now do with that every month. And also, on the flip side, the savings in ad spending, because now they don't have to blast all those ads to, let's say, 10,000 people. Maybe every month it goes down about 10%. So those are the type of things that you need to think about when you're communicating the, the value add of a technology platform, okay? Cool. So, um, oh, so with that, <laughs> let me turn it back over to Vaughn, and he wants to say something as well, okay? So I'll be right back. So where did we get with all this effort? First and foremost, we got the organization thinking about tagging and analytics. We showed them the value in engaging with analytics platforms, and then we did that again and again. We'll do it tomorrow, and we're gonna keep on doing it. Because at the end of the day, marketers, at least in pharma, but I'm guessing pretty much everywhere, want information, insights, and recommendations that will help them make better, faster decisions. Most of the time, they don't particularly care how that happens, just that it does, and that they have an easy way to get there. We delivered that. And from an enterprise standpoint, we also help them operate more efficiently with centralized tagging, while also building a common infrastructure for the entire company and language around tagging that enables our teams to benefit, regardless of what business unit or geography they're in. And when you really want to get the organization's attention, you show them how much that inefficiency is costing them. By using a centralized analytics implementation and using the data to drive website retirements and optimization efforts, that can lead to real material savings to an organization. It can fund the project, it can get finance involved, which usually is kind of helpful, and it can certainly give you more leverage to move even a large global decentralized company like Sanofi. So how might this work for you? What are some steps you can take? Well, first, you have to be brutally honest with yourself. What can your organization handle? What can you handle? What can your team really manage and support? What resources do you have that, to basically do this type of work? Next, and this may be blasphemy to say at DV, but tagging isn't the most glamorous business, and there are lots of marketers out there who have no idea what it is or how it impacts their decision making. You probably don't need every marketer to be able to know how to configure Telium IQ, though they absolutely need to know how important quality tagging is to their business. Third, you need to collaborate. You don't have to be an IT whisperer or a marketing whisperer, but you need to bring in stakeholders from all the different functions, whether it be marketing, IT, finance, security, privacy, any other group who basically has an interest in a website. And you need to plan. This means you need to build a business case. At least in a company like Santa Fe, if you can't show the value and return on investment, you're not gonna get the resources to go do the job. And if you don't have a plan about how you're gonna execute this, regardless of how flexible that plan may be, it's a disservice. Next, you need to deliver. You gotta make it easy for people. Sometimes your service model can actually be more important than the products you use. The easier something is to use, the more likely people will be to use it. And finally, you need to measure. You gotta measure your performance, measure your output, measure the utilization, build that marketing culture, that measurement culture, and never stop measuring. So um, before I close, I, even though that Vaughn was not a biomedical engineer, um, I know he'd be thrilled if everybody stood up for one second. Just stand up for a second, if you can. Everybody up, okay? And I want, to take your I want you to take your hands like this and make a clapping sound, right? Because now I can tell him that we ended in a standing ovation, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much.